So, who are you? I'm Bill Watkins. Yeah, and we know you. <laughs> <laughs> you, you helped sponsor our show when you uh, were CEO yeah, that's at right, uh, right. Seagate. That's right. That's but now right. you got a new gig going. Yeah, no, I am uh, kind of got involved in light. Um, and, in and lights? Looks, in lights. And you can what? see some of these here. They're, it's just, uh, we so make, this is going to be all about the future of light. The future of light. It's uh, And it's, it's funny. I mean, it's... Uh, it's really about LEDs. It's about really kind of, in, in my mind, making a making semiconductor solid state light. I mean, if you think about the last vestiges of vacuum technology, is our light bulb. Yeah. Um, and so it's just really ripe for a technology solution that's around cost efficiency or energy efficiency. So it's very clean, um, very energy efficient. You know, the the input cost or the the initial kind of cost to put it in is higher, but that cost is coming down dramatically fast. Yeah. Um, you know, in the commercial space for retail and commercial building, the payback's less than two years. And that's not even counting the fact that you don't have to change light bulbs, have people changing light bulbs or, or any of those sort of things. I mean, so and then the maintenance it, it's just pretty, pretty, pretty easy. Um, yeah. A couple but, of people walked in here by the way. That's Julie Still. She's a oh. friend. <laughs> and who are you? Ryan. Yeah. And you run marketing here? Yeah, I uh, I'm, uh, do the corporate marketing. Okay. And what's this thing on, on the table here? This is a street light. A street light here. Yeah, a street light. This is a, a down street light. Um, so and this would go on a pole? Go on a pole. And, and like in China, they're, everyone in China and all the street lights go on LED because they don't want to have to put wires and coppers in. So yeah. they put a street light, they put an LED, have a little solar battery up there, a little battery with a solar cell, stores all day, and the lights work all night. Yeah. Uh, and they don't need wires or anything like that or any copper or any of that stuff. And so, again, you can see the real viability of this. 20% of the world's electricity is used for lighting. Yeah. LEDs would drop that by 75% if we replaced that. And that, that has huge impacts on our Energy, global, global right? warming. It's one less coal factor. I mean, you think about it, yeah. it's, 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 it's really taking what we currently have and creating a whole more available energy. Yeah. Um, now, there are some problems with these. I, I, I've read that if, uh, if you use uh, uh, LEDs and street lights, yeah. they don't have, generate any heat, so they don't melt ice on well, the lights. That, yeah, well, that, that's part of it. They, they are actually, they're, as they're constricted here, they don't have very much heat. In fact, that story came out of Minnesota, and it's funny since that story came out. A lot of other places said, no, we don't have that problem. But even more important, if you, if you listened and read that story, the city manager, whoever the facility guy was, he said, we'll find a way to get rid of the frost because the savings are so phenomenal for us, we ain't ever going back. Yeah. And so, but don't... So, so are you having to add a heating element? No, no actually, a lot of people have, that come back have, have basically said they have ways around it and they're knocking it off and it's not that big a deal. Um, you can put a little reflectors. See, in California, we totally don't have that, that, that problem. problem. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen an yeah. inch of ice on yeah. anything yeah. here. Well, that's, that's why we're all talking for it. Hey, look let me uh, introduce uh, Mark. Yeah. Hey, how are you doing, Mark? You doing? Mark's you're live. You're live on video here. Yeah. Oh, I am. Yeah. Come on, Mark. <laughs> you know, but you know, this is like I say, this is Mark Sabota. He, yeah. He's uh, he's the president of the company. He's really the one who's really developed this product line, really put this thing together, and and uh, he's real expert here. And and so maybe I don't mark my. So are are you selling lights now, or or are you in a startup? Tell me what. Tell me a little bit about the company and what what's going on in the marketplace and in your company. So the, uh, the the company is, uh, as we like to say, we're the first new U.S.-based LED company in 20 years, and we're one of only three that exists in the United States. The others being Cree, which is publicly traded. Uh, the other is uh, Lumileds, which is owned by Philips. Yeah. But the basis of that claim is that we that we make the core materials necessary uh, to make an LED. But we're unique in that we're the only company worldwide that's focused solely on general lighting, and so. With our core materials targeting the end market of general lighting, the general lighting market has a requirement for quality of light, energy efficiency, and cost. We deliver a light source that effectively is not an LED, but this light produces a certain amount of light, yeah. a certain quality of light, at, an, at a level of energy efficiency that's good enough for the market to get Energy Star or Title 24 certification. And then after that, it's all about cost. So we're using our vertically integrated strategy to drive the cost of solid state lighting down, which will... How, how does this light work? What, what is the tech? Now, a lot of people have heard the word LED, but yeah. they have no idea what it is. Yeah. You know, they just know that in their flashlights, an LED. Right? You know, <laughs> very it, different. This is very different. So tell me a little yeah, bit so about you, the technology. Basically, you start with a, uh, a piece of sapphire. Uh, that sapphire is actually, actually this is the sapphire. 
Uh, that sapphire goes into a, uh, a system called an, an MOCVD machine where we grow epi layers. When we what are those epi? There are, we, we deposit you know nano uh, type uh, layers of materials that when they're excited by electricity they, they emit light. Yeah. And so basically, once we take our sapphire wafer, we deposit our, our materials, this is where all the photons are created. So our other facility has what we call our epi reactors. Yeah. This facility here has our chip processing fab. So when you make an epi wafer, you have to then turn it into an LED chip. Uh, but when you make a chip, it's a very simple uh, electronic device. Uh, it's not like a microprocessor, it's a very simple diode. But the light that's in this epi material is trapped and by creating the chip structure, you're allowing ways for the light to escape. And uh, that then gets turned into a, a chip, which then can, for some companies, is put into a, a packaged LED. This happens to be a product that you would find from a Lumen LEDs or a Cree. And then those, those types of uh, products, then for a lighting system, get put onto a board, and then they get put into something like this, which, which would be considered a downlight. Yeah. Uh, what Bridgelox has done is we have the core materials. We've chosen not to make the light source one chip at a time, but we actually provide an integrated system that provides enough light for to, uh, to give the equivalent light output as let's say a 60 watt light bulb or an 800 lumen down light or um, in in that one little chip. In this one little chip. So, so you can a device bundle like this replaces a device like that. And so and you can bundle a bunch of those little chips together to make more light, right? Or or you make a bigger device. Got it. As Mark was talking, this is a hundred billion dollar market just for down lighting the street lights. I mean street lights alone is a twenty eight billion dollar market. Less than six hundred million dollars of LED seven hundred was shipped last year. And we're gonna be able to convert that whole market to LEDs. And again, as we scale wrap, costs start dropping. I mean bulbs, these bulbs cost ninety dollars two years ago, then forty, they'll be down to ten dollars. Now again, all that scale, you've seen it across every you know, every technology you've oh, covered. Yeah. Once the thing gets gone, I remember when I was in college, Steve Wozniak showed me his color printer, it cost forty thousand dollars. Now it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. a forty dollar printer yeah. does a better job, right? For, and you're gonna see the yeah. same first wang first computer I worked on was a wang that had less intelligence in your calculator it cost twenty eight thousand dollars yeah and and i couldn't even do a full regression analysis with that computer yeah. so you could you, just see it this is the, the what i think is the last of the great markets like i said of vacuum technology that that's going to change there's this perfect convergence and, and really led by mark which is we have a great company here with a great operating cost model and technology model you've got the the, the government's really demanding energy efficiencies with with the different different uh, regulations and then you got this convergence of the fact it's clean there's no lead there's no mercury so you know and i have a hundred billion dollar market that's just prone yeah that, that's what you dream about yeah and that's our opportunity and it's it's there the incumbents have got the same problem that all incumbents have even though some of them as he said have led they're, they're running billion dollar lighting businesses doing old technology how do they drop that and bring the new technology Seagate, so same problem with Flash versus how do we bring Flash up, but I'm living off a $13 billion revenue stream. So they've got this, this problem, you know, Kodak, they knew about digital film, yeah. but how do you stop all the regular stuff till the other one, you know, compensates? And so it becomes, he's just... Well, not only that, you have different expertise needed, right? Yeah. Your fab here is different, different than right. building a regular yeah. old light bulb, yeah. right? Oh, it is, and it's different team, but how do you manage that conversion? We don't have to worry about it. We have no revenue dependent on the old stuff. And so Mark and his team are just totally focused on changing the world LEDs. And so I've been in those big corporate rooms where you're trying to figure out. Now, who's out your com competition? Because I bet other companies are, like, looking at this, Mark. Yeah. I saw a bunch of them at CES. I saw a bunch of lighting companies yeah. using LEDs. So yeah. what, what, what's the comp competitive landscape look like? Well, I think depending on how you think about it, because we're in general lighting. And that's a much narrower field than people are doing black lights and stuff like that or stuff for your camera or, or TV. Th those are just the red blues. This is a much kind of higher technology. Level so we're in general lighting. It's a much smaller group. So anyway, Mark, you may want to talk about because he knows these guys well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so the uh, the important thing to realize is that the technology's made huge improvements over the past ten years. So to make a white LED, I think back in in uh, two thousand, it was about six lumens per watt. Yeah. Today, the industry can make white LEDs that are hundred lumens per watt. So that's why the market is open. The technology is energy efficient. Yeah. Um, it's still going to be, it's even, it has more room to, to grow, 
but it's really about the cost. And so the cost of the technology is, is what's important. And part of the way to solve that is by looking at the system and trying to find ways to take cost out of the system by further integrating the approach. So this- And that's why this is, a, so, so this this is, this is less costly than yeah, that, right? right? Because it's this all is, integrated. This is an approach to making a solid state light source. Um, as you can see, some of the first lighting products that, that came onto the market use this approach. Yeah. It works. It's just more costly. And so everything that is uh, that we're focusing on now is about how to reduce the cost of light. And we're looking at orders of magnitude of uh, cost improvements. And when those orders of mag at magnitude of improvement are realized, the market opens up in a bit. Now, are these on the market already? We have products on the market shipping today, yes. Okay. Um, and so coming this year, is this is a light based on the integrated approach actually, that no, you're we have talking about? Approach. No, oh, okay. the light. They look the same actually, to you. Actually, this is, our, this, is our, this is the product line that we ship today. Okay. Uh, Brian, can you help me set yeah. some of this? Yeah, we'll set it up. Yeah. Can you just put a bulb over these? Okay. So the way, the way the product line was developed, if you, uh, if you, if you take a look, you'll, you'll see 400. Yeah. 400 lumens is the same light output as a 40-watt light bulb. Right. Uh, uh, 800 lumens is the same light output as your 60 watt light bulb. Okay. Or your typical six inch can light that you might have in your home or your. Uh, uh, it, it, now let's just talk about that. What's the electricity usage difference based on an 800 lumen LED versus, say, old style regular? It's, it's at least one tenth of the one, one, one tenth of the energy is consumed by. LED. One tenth. Th think about it. eight for 800 lumens. Yeah. 60 watts. Probably do 800 lumens for what five watts, six yeah. watts. Just tell you right now. So the same, and 800 lumens is the output you see in a 60 watt bulb. That same amount of light they can do with five or six watts. Yeah. Versus I'm building a TV studio in my house, by the way, and I'm using LED lights as well because the TV studios are all going to LED yeah. lights. Partly because they're, they use a lot less energy, but also because they're cool. Yeah. You don't have to. You don't have to have a huge air conditioner. Should, you yeah. know, just sitting right next to your light source because old style lights get really hot if yeah. you have a lot of them, right. and these new lights don't get don't generate any heat. Maybe we get off 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 the record. Sure, we use some information about how the lighting is being applied into studios, and you might choose to uh, work with one of our customers. Oh, excellent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we I, I I hope these things start coming down in price a lot because. Uh, Leo Laporte Studio has uh, some LED some two foot by two foot lights, eighteen hundred dollars. I think he spent on those. Oh, so, okay. Okay. pretty expensive lighting. And they, but we're already seeing the prices come down. But hopefully, you guys are driving down the prices. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even we, more. we will. We're going to be driving it. So yeah, cool. So, so just to complete, so there's different levels of light. So yeah. the, uh, the the twelve hundred lumen is about the same as a uh, hundred watt uh, um, hundred watt light bulb, seventy five watt light bulb. Yeah. Two thousand lumens is about the same as one hundred fifty lumen uh, watt light bulb. But you could put yeah. ten of them and still use the same power as as one old sure, bulb. Yeah, sure. So you could have a lot more light, light right. for the same cost right. or the same energy. Yeah. Now, how much does it cost like to build one light bulb? You know, like a like a. Today we market our technology for about one cent per lumen okay. in cool white, and about about one and a half to two cents per lumen in warm white. So, you know, to get the same amount of light as a as a sixty watt light bulb, it would sell for we would sell a product like this yeah. for maybe about. Uh, about eight dollars. Eight bucks. Yeah. So that's not too bad because the uh, fluorescent light bulbs were selling at Home at Depot time. for ten bucks, fifteen bucks. Now they're down, but these are potentially going to dr be be dramatically cheaper than fluorescents, right? It's important that our technology become cost competitive yeah. with fluorescents, uh, be and then once it's cost competitive, it has no mercury and no lead, which is which fluorescents do, which right? Fluorescents do. Yeah. Because fluorescents basically coat the glass with some yeah. nasty stuff, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's very nasty. But you bring up fluorescence. So one of the one of the key things, if if you're going to be in general lighting, I, I said before, quality of light yeah. is extremely important. It's an enabler for general lighting. It isn't for street lights and that, but 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 it is for general lighting. General lighting being the lights in this the building or in your home. So okay. we have. WW is warm white. That's the color that you usually like in your home. That the, the warmer uh, color temperatures. Uh, we have neutral white, which is what we typically find in our office environment, and then we have cool white, which you could find on exterior or in, in the factory environment. Yeah. But not only is it the right color, it's the right color rendering. 
Yeah. So when you, if you look at your typical fluorescent bulb and you go into your closet in the morning and you're trying to figure out a black or, or a, a, a blue sock, you sometimes can't distinguish that's color rendering and you can see it on film or if you use a digital camera it looks green yeah. right to so film you, so the film industry actually wants a different type of color rendering so it works well with the film that's yeah. what i was going to mention to you a little bit later but so basically we produce the right we control the quality of light we control the energy efficiency and now it's all about driving the cost down yeah part of what you're seeing when it comes to street lights is uh uh, it's the system approach again when a lot of light sources a, a fluorescent light in this room the, the luminaire the fixture that it's in is only about 70 percent efficient so if you start with an 80 lumen per watt compact fluorescent source and you put it in that fixture you're only getting 56 lumens per watt out of the system okay you can start with an LED source which is what we call highly directional source you can make luminaires that are over 90% efficient. Interesting. So I can start with a lower performance, effectively, source and get even a higher performance system. Got and it. that's why you've seen streetlights take over. The streetlight technology, or the LED technology, wasn't more efficient than the technology it was replacing. But when you put it in the head, you, you put the light on the surface where it needed to go, you actually had a better quality of light and you had it uh, uh, running at a more, a more efficiently as well. Interesting. So what what's the challenges of making these things in in quantities of millions? You know, million. You know, Seagate makes a million drives a, a week, right? How many lights a week are you guys going to be making? It you know, let's say in two or three years after the market really well, heats up for this technology, it's going to be a lot. I mean, it, you know, again, I think as as you know, Mark and Mark telling more, but but again, it's it, it's 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 again as he talked about, it's the Epi, it's, it's putting in the production, it's putting the samples. I mean, they have a great design, it works. And it's now just getting it out the field, getting it mature, and, and getting the manufacturing capacities up. It's all about, and so again, it's, it's a hundred billion market, and we want to do them all. Now, selling a streetlight like like this is probably a, a lot different than trying to sell me an eighty or an eight hundred lumen light in yeah. Home Depot, right? And, then, you, and, and we are not selling that. That's our customers' product. Right, so right, part so of what you see here is what our customers are doing. doing. Got with it. Our product, but with the what? product is actually easy to use and easy to assemble yeah. because you take. You take our light source here, and this happens to be a light source that would be used for high-end retail lighting. So what you'd find in a Nordstrom's or any high-end retail, um, this actually replaces metal halide yeah. lamps. So most people think of LEDs replacing incandescent and halogen and compact fluorescent, but actually the technology is going to start infringing on the space of HID. The good thing about this is we actually have installations in Europe uh, today this is the highest quality light source that exists. Yeah. I mean, people do not uh, uh, cut uh, cut back on um, no. If you're selling on, uh, on lighting for retail, if it, you're selling eight thousand dollars worth of jewelry, right? It, you're it, not you're not going to skimp on the light. Right, you know? right. If you're Steve Jobs building a new Apple store, you you want great looking lights, great looking right? Lighting. So basically, the uh, the light sources um, uh, will deliver that, and that and the technology continues to to encroach on all aspects of the of the value chain but but you take this light source yeah you effectively take because we've controlled the quality of light you attach it to a heat sink you connect a driver and you wrap an optic or a package around it and you have a working lamp or luminaire you don't necessarily have to design using a bag of leds we we are basically giving the customer base a bulb an LED bulb, yeah. and they may need a ballast or an electronic driver. And that's where the BridgeLux focus is, to deliver a system that makes it easy to buy a bulb and a ballast. Interesting. But it'll be, we're not going to ship that. Yeah. We're shipping these arrays and, and how, yeah. enabling that guy to make that. So it's sort of a BridgeLux inside. You know, that's that's kind of the, the strategy that the market... So you're not going to try to build a brand that goes on the the uh, shelf, shelf at Home Depot. No, no. Somebody else is going to do, do that, that. with our your with your technology. Our customers are trying to do that. Yeah. That's what our customers do, and then we're going to be bridge lux inside, which is really how Marcus set this up. And and I just I think that's, that's the right strategy. We don't, we're not going to compete against our customers. We're here to help enable them. So your challenge is really build a great fab right. that, that has no cost in it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which and, and, is sort of how hard drive. And, and also not just making a great fab and, and getting a great and getting great LEDs and all that. It's really, well, as he says, and, and I think it's really key: is how do you integrate? How do you make our customers enabling yeah. and enable them? And that's where I think, really, from you know the product marketing, product you know qualifications, it's 
And what he's done is we're going to make it easy for those guys to make those things.